All right, hi everyone. We are already at week six of the semester, and this is the sixth tutorial. Just like last week, there are going to be two steps. One is making another value scale, and the other is going to be drawing a, a small box or other shape using just value shapes. For the gradation, unlike last week where I wanted you to create smooth areas of tone. Uh, for this week, I want you to use line to make value. And what we see here are three examples of that. So the top one uh, is a scribbling mark. The middle one, that, that's not really a technical term, but it's just a scribbling type mark. Uh, the second one is cross hatching, so where there are lines that are used in a diagonal way, so kind of like X's. And then the bottom one just says hatching, which is uh, straight lines. And so instead of, again, instead of having a flat, flat uh, tone, uh, the tone is made up of an accumulation of lines. You don't need to do three of these. I just want you to pick one technique. Um, you could also do stippling if you know what that is, but that's going to be pretty time, time consuming for the other, for the other part. Um, but I just want you to make, uh, make a value scale using line to make the value. can zoom in a little bit just so you get a really clear idea of what's going on here. Okay, so again, you can see how line is used to make value here. There are lots of ways to do this. These are these are the three ways that I most commonly use. Okay, for the next step, I want you to find some sort of uh, box or simple object. A white box would be best. I just had this cardboard box and I painted it white. Hopefully you have something similar. You could uh, go to the studio also. There are a bunch of white boxes in the still life area. Or you could even make one out of paper and tape. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw this box using only value shapes. The idea is to understand the structure of an object um, and how that's shown through uh, just light and shadow, and we're not going to use line at all. So the idea is to show this object um, only by using tones of value. You want to light your object as dramatically as you can, um, so you have clear, consistent planes of light and shadow. So we can see here that I have a really bright tone here. Um, uh, that could be my number one value, my lightest value, and then I would have something like the number two value, this lighter gray, uh, and then I have uh, number three for that shadow, number four for the cast shadow of the object. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, it's cast shadow is just the shadow that is cast on the ground from an object. Um, and then uh, this really uh, intense cast shadow right below the object, that could be our five tone. All right, after you have your object set up with uh, good lighting and you can see some clear value tones, uh, I want you to move to the paper. And uh, as we've done many times before in this class, uh, just measure the basic proportions, the height, you know, the height versus the width of your object to just make sure you have the correct proportions. Um, and then uh, make sure your object obeys uh, the general idea of perspective. So, here I have a box that is in a two-point type perspective, so I have one vanishing point to the right that these edges are going to converge to, and a one vanishing point to the left that these edges are going to converge to. Next, I want you to include any shadows, so for me, um, besides the planes of the object itself, uh, I do see a really s significant cast shadow that I'm going to draw out right now. So judge things a little bit. Okay, for this step, use a really use a light pencil mark. If you have a 2H pencil on hand, or if you're in the studio, grab a 2H pencil. Because as we complete this drawing, as I mentioned earlier, 
the idea is to eliminate all lines. So we're only working with value. Okay, so the, the only line, rather, should be making the value, um, not showing us any of the edges. Okay, I'm just going to adjust this really quick. I'm looking at this from a sort of a strange angle while taping. Let's bring that in a little bit. Okay, the next thing I want us to do, uh, like I walked us through briefly when we were looking at the box, is try to name the values. So if we go back to our value scale, Um, and we were to call this, you know, value number one, this value number two, three, four, and five. So going from white to nearly black. Uh, I'd like you to look at your object and do the same thing. And this is just like what we're going to do with project three. So I would call this number one value. I would call the top of my object number two. Uh, I call the side number three, uh, the lighter areas of the cast shadow four, and then five would be uh, the very dark areas of the cast shadow. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that more clearly. I'll also, I'll just take a photo of the object itself and uh, put some numbers in it just to make sure that's really clear. Okay, zoom back out a little bit. Uh, one very important thing that I uh, just forgot to include with those numbers is the background. So whatever surface, whatever desk, floor, wall, whatever you see behind the object, I want you to try and name that as well in terms of the value. So for me, uh, it's closest, it's kind of in between value 2 and 3, but I think it's a little bit closer to value 3, which is the same as that side. So I'm going to call this value 3 as well. Okay, again, because we're not going to be using line to delineate this object, we have to make sure there's some sort of value in the background in order to show the difference between uh, where the shape is and where the shape is not. Okay, now working uh, with, you could work with a darker pencil, that would make it easier. Um, but if you just have a 2B pencil, that's fine as well. Um, I want you to start shading in the tones. And use uh, whatever you used for your value scale. So if you used hatching or cross hatching or a more scribbling mark, um, use that to make uh, the value for this part. So I'm going to start, obviously one I'm going to leave as the white of the paper. And then I'm going to start with uh, the second tone. Okay, and I'm going to use cross hatching. And something I like to do when I use cross hatching is I like to follow the, the, the form. So I'm following the plane as if I'm uh, tracing the top of this box. What that does, I think, is uh, I really think it uh, accentuates the sense of volume of the object if you do this instead of going you know this way or uh, at some other angle. Changing my line slightly with perspective, but not that much. Okay, I'll just pause it for a second, clean that up. Well, that was really fun. That was like a cooking show. It came out of the oven, and now the shape looks good. Okay, so let's move to uh, number three, and I'm going to do the same thing, where I'm going to slowly use my cross hatching to fill in this shape. thing I want to point out again is that the difference between this plane on the top 
in this plane that I am now drawing um, is shown only through value, so I don't want any line in there, uh, or line dividing those two planes. I want it just to be a difference in value. Try and get these planes consistent, even though we are using line to make the value, and there's going to be some uh, some sense of texture or variation, you want the overall tone to be consistent. Okay, I'm gonna just pause it again to clean that up. Okay, I'm just gonna note again that uh, with my cross hatching here, I was again following this plane, tracing this plane, which again I think makes to uh, helps make the objects seem uh, more dimensional. Okay, so. Uh, you know, I'm also going to work with the background now because that, uh, I decided, was my number three as well. So I'm going to shade in my background. So showing that difference between the background and the object again just with the value. Alright, this is going to take me a couple of minutes, so I will uh, I'll pause it again. Okay, so uh, what you should see here is that this tone in the background uh, should be very similar to the tone here. Uh, if I wasn't doing this as part of a demo, I would probably work on the shadow at the same time. It seems a little strange that I kind of left this shadow open, but um, just for clarity, um, okay, I'm working through from one, which is leaving the paper paper white, to two, the light gray, three, a medium gray, also three for the background, the medium gray. And now I'll uh, work on the darker shadow. Okay, this is going to take me a little while again, so I will pause it. But as before, I'm doing the same kind of cross hatching. I'm right now trying to follow kind of the same lines I created uh, when I was making the tone for the desktop. So it sort of seems like they're on the same plane. Okay, that looks pretty good. I, I may go around and just uh, try and get the edges really nice because, again, that's that's how we get um, the sense of realism when the edges between the objects are shown only with value. And I'm going to smooth things out a little bit. And there is definitely a place in drawing for using a line to create edge, because um, there are so many different styles of drawing, but in this unit of the class, we're really focusing on how we can only use value. Um, and when we're going to use line with the value, it's to make value, as I'm doing here with the hatching, not to you know draw the edges of the shape. Okay, let me label this, number four. Um, and the only thing I have to do is I'm going to add a little bit of my darkest tone right along the edge where I see a really strong shadow. That is my number five.
All right, I'm going to upload this now. I will also include some photographs and the instructions below. So I uh, hope it goes well. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. And see you in class.